Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the Murdoch DeFi YouTube channel. And in today's video, of course, we're going to be talking about stable fund. So this all happened probably within the, I don't know, last 24 to 36 hours or so. And it's not just stable fund, right? It's been a cascading series of events. Um, and to, to be honest, it's been quite a kick to, uh, quite, a, quite a kick to the nuts. And I'm sure that so many of you watching this video can relate. So that is what we're going to be talking about today. I want to fill everybody in on the events that took place yesterday. And then also uh, a recent um, kind of voice memo that was put out in the Stable Fund Telegram this morning. Talking about a V2 and all that stuff. Um, but before we go ahead and jump into today's video, please make sure that you do like this video so that way we can get as many people that are actively participated in Stable Fund um, this information because it is important to stay up to date on these types of topics, uh, especially when you're talking about money that's locked up into a protocol, right? Uh, so if you could smash that like button, also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already but I'm sure most of you have. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Yesterday uh, at 5.08 a.m. my time, a uh, announcement was posted in the Telegram and Discord. It says, dear members, because of all the panic, the team has made a decision to shut down all the staking contracts, be it Matic, BNB, and BUSD. However, Matic was already shut down pending the contract rollout, fixing the looping issues on the Matic side of things. They say, so... You cannot deposit into the contract. We will still run as a wallet and provide all the other services, as mentioned, apart from staking. But I'm willing to bet that the majority of you, um, myself included, only used stable fund uh, for the 1.5% daily uh, or the staking features, not really so much the, the wallet stuff, right? Uh, they said that they're going to be re running a script next week from the 31st of October to get all the data um, and then start the refunds. Uh, shortly after this update was made, there was an impromptu AMA scheduled within the Telegram community on the stable fund side uh, where they kind of discussed a little bit of why this stuff was, was going on. Um, and gathering all the information that I could um, I'm going to formulate my opinion on what's kind of going on. Um, and I could be completely wrong. Again, I don't have all the information that they have on, on their side uh, or what goes on behind the scenes. Uh, but essentially, they were running into issues where a lot of the funds were being drained from the BUSD side of things. And I believe that the contract balance even got down to around $16 million before they decided to pull the plug and essentially pull all the funds from the contract and stop deposits and withdrawals and all that stuff. So, I mean, and just a couple of days ago, it was up around or up above the $20 million mark. Um, I know that I did hear some rumors going around that, um, that after the AMA that Michael dropped the, where he talked about the, the credit card or the debit card coming. Um, I know that he posted the, uh, the company that they had signed the agreement with and paid the $120,000 to, um, people were going out of their way to email this company. I don't know what they were saying in the emails, but um, obviously the, the company got back to Stable Funds team and, uh, and were not happy. Um, also, I assume that there was other FUD going around um, within, within other communities. I don't know for sure. But the, the contract balance was being drained on the BUSD side of things, which apparently added or, or caused some stressors to the people that were running the bots. And I don't know if this is, if this is the, the, right, um, the right thing to say or the right assumption, but from what I've gathered is that they're their traders are essentially maybe using leverage trading, um, which if, if the contract is draining, right. And they, then people want to pull money out and they need to be able to add money back into the contract. Um, like that was 
negatively impacting the, 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 how the traders were performing. So I know that Michael said that they had, you know, a period of three days or the, over the last three days, they had negative days, um, in terms of trading. So obviously that was, um, some, some concerning things that were going on behind the scenes. Um, and you couple that with all the FUD that was going on, which I'm not here to say that it, any of this is right or wrong. I'm just giving you the information that I've been given. Um, and, uh, in order for them to 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 kind of stop the bleeding, so to speak, um, they made a decision to to pause all the contracts and offer investors a refund. They did also mention that um, that after this, they were going to be opening uh, like a V two, uh, or they're going to be reopening staking uh, in the future to like a close knit community. Um, but nobody knows what what that really meant uh, at the time. Um, until until this morning and I'm, I'm gonna play the the voice memo from the telegram here in a second uh from this morning's update but um but yeah i i guess i guess what i don't understand is like why they couldn't have just taken funds from the fiduciary wallet and added that to the busd contract to mitigate um some people pulling funds out obviously for for optics uh, that's going to to look good on the protocol, probably look good on Michael, and maybe stop some of the fuds that that was going on. Um, but like I said, I don't know the inner workings of what they're doing behind the scenes, so I can't say if that was the best choice. I'm only forming an opinion based on the information that I know. Um, again, I don't know everything, so I could be completely wrong. I'm just a dumb YouTuber. Um, that being said. Let's go ahead and jump into this morning's update. I'm going to go ahead and play this memo. It's about a minute long, minute and 20 seconds. Dear members, okay, so I've got some good news for you. And obviously, this is now coming because we've had some time to digest what direction we have to go in. So we will definitely be doing a V2. But the matrix of, uh, sorry, matrices of V2 and stuff like that are going to be decided in a few days because traders are resting right now. I've given them some time off. Additionally, what we've done is instead of running scripts, because this, these people are so annoying, some of the fudders who really want to keep fudding and going on about things. By tomorrow, you will have a page on the website where you can go and apply for refunds. Okay. Or you can choose to participate in V2. And there is going to be a clear calculator there. When you put your wallet address there, it will tell you if you're applicable for a refund or if you've already profited. And if you're not, you can then try to fill up two options, whether continue with V2 or just apply your refund. So the dev team's right now making all these things and they will be uploaded on the website soon. So as you can hear there, uh, hopefully that, that came through loud enough. It, it looked like it on the audio side of things, but hopefully it did. I'll, I'll listen back to this before I post it. But as you can hear, um, they have decided to go ahead and move forward with a V2 contract rollout. Uh, they have not provided any uh, kind of requirements of what that will look like. And they did say that they're going to be putting a kind of like a, like a calculator up on the website very soon that will be able to give you an understanding of how much your refund is going to be, right? So part of the, the announcement yesterday was, okay, well, if you wanted a refund, say you deposited $10,000 with your own money, that was your principal deposit, and you've just been taking profits on that, say you've taken out $8,000 in profit, then that means that your refund would be for $2,000. So they're going to implement a calculator on the website that will run this math and, uh, and be able to give you a clear cut understanding of what your refund will look like. Obviously, if you put in $10,000 and you've pulled out $11,000, then you're not going to be entitled to any type of refund. Um, but furthermore, they uh, he also did mention the fact that you would be able to essentially roll your funds over into the V2 contract if you did not want a refund. And I'm sure that there's going to be many parameters and stipulations behind the like b behind the rollout of v2 
all right? Because if there's not, and you just have access to your funds again, um, and uh, there's no kind of lockup period or anything like that, then I would imagine that the majority of people would just go to the V2 rollover and then start draining the, uh, like the V2 contract. So I'm sure, I mean, there has to be some parameters on, on how you can interact moving funds from uh, or rolling funds over from the V1 side to the V2 side. So I would just be cautious and, and aware of that. Um, and obviously it's in your best interest to, to make sure that you're staying up to date with all this information, especially if you have any money locked up into stable fund, as you can see here on the screen myself, um, you know, we have what, you know, just over $40,000 that were available to withdraw. Um, I do know that there was a bunch of people that did start to withdraw, um, but I'll stay true to, um, to, to my views in the last video, like when they paused the Matic contract, I didn't really think it was going to be an issue because they've had this same looping issue on the Matic side in other contracts that they put out. And I've seen it. I've been a part of those contracts. So them having to update that to fix that looping issue, um, it didn't bother me, right? And and like I said, I'm still going to hold to that. And, and that wasn't a deciding factor in keeping my money in or taking it out. It wasn't even a, a thought in my mind, to be honest. Uh, but here we are now, right? And now, uh, a week later, our, all of our funds are, are locked up into um, into this. And I've had a lot of people come to me and ask, well, do you think that, that they're going to follow through with a refund? Um, and I do, right? Because Michael has a track record of doing so. Um, but, you know, things always change. Um, if I could give my views and opinions on the voice memo that I just played for you guys. Uh, I think that I think that it's it it's hard, right? Because there's so many people that would be willing to go into the V2 contract, but there's also so many people that would just want to uh, get the refund back and then walk away and be done with it. And maybe this got to maybe Stable Fund got to a point where there were so many users in it. Um, in the beginning, it was easy to operate because you're only dealing with um, a couple hundred people, a couple hundred investors. You're only dealing with small numbers uh, of money in terms of trading. Uh, and, and, and all that stuff gets increasingly harder to deal with as the protocols start to scale, right? Now you're, instead of dealing with a, with a couple hundred investors or opinions, you're now dealing with thousands and thousands, right? Like the, the Telegram group has... Uh, over 9,000 members. Uh, the Discord is pretty popular as well. Um, and really, there's only two people that are interacting, uh, for the most part, uh, from the team with the community, and that's Ray and that's Hells. Um, so I understand that that can be very stressful at times. Um, but I think moving forward, if they do roll out a V2 contract, they need to bring somebody on the team that is specialized in PR, right? You can't just get on AMAs and, and, uh, and talk to people this way, like, like what happened yesterday and what, even what happened last week. I just think that, that, that does not, that does not sure. Like if that's your opinion, then keep it to yourself, but you have to be more professional when talking to people. Um, you have to be, uh, so, I mean, you could even say that some of this, this FUD might have, might have been made worse by the way that they choose to interact with the community, you know, and um, it will definitely be interesting to see how they go about. I don't know if, if, if they're going to be like trying to, trying to figure out who they want to bring into the V2 contract, what that will look like. Um, who knows, right? Uh, I guess we'll just be standing by and, and, and checking out for the updates that they make going on in the future. Um, so if, if you came to today's video and, and hope for a plan, uh, on what I'm doing, uh, or to, to hear what I plan on doing in the future, the, the, the answer is that I don't know because we haven't given, been given all the information yet. Right. Like, 
once the information comes out about, uh, around the parameters on how the V2 contract will roll out, I think it'll be then time to make the best decision on what I plan to do moving forward. But let me know what your guys' thoughts are um, down below in the comment section of today's video. If I got any of the information wrong, please also let me know uh, because at the end of the day, like we're in this together and if you have if you have more accurate, better information, then I would love to hear that. Uh, my DMs are open over on Discord and on Twitter. Uh, links down below in the description. Um, other than that, guys, I think that's going to cover everything that I wanted to touch on uh, about um, about stable fund. I did also want to mention Horde. Or sorry, not Horde. <laughs> Wealth Mountain obviously was taken down too. Um, so after this happened with stable fund, the contract balance over on wealth mountain on the BUSD side got absolutely hammered. Um, and I literally watched this go from a million dollars, um, was able to catch, get my funds out at a little under a million dollars. Um, I did update, update the, well, at least my community, um, within the, the premium discord server and the DeFi soapbox. Uh, so if you want to be a part of those communities, then links, like I said, will be down below in the description of today's video, uh, because I understand that not everybody has the time to sit and monitor these things. However, this is what I do for a living, and, and I sit in front of a computer all day and, and um, follow along with these things. So uh, if that's a benefit to you, then, you know, check out the community. Uh, that being said, uh, we don't know yet how Wealth Mountain V2 migration is going um unless i mean to be honest i haven't really been keeping track of their telegram updates or, or anything like that so if you have any more information regarding the v2 migration like i said let me know down below in the comment section of today's video um also before we head out i did want to touch on horde because i did make a pretty uh extensive video um I believe last week kind of detailing or deep diving into Horde. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, I definitely highly recommend it, especially if you're invested in the Horde. It's, there's a ton of good information how I'm kind of watching this protocol progress as the days go on. But as you can see here, uh, or if you watch my last video, I had a, a balance here of 48 Horde tokens. Um, obviously, you can see here it's now zero uh, because I was able to find a time and be able to sell some tokens when the price went over $100. So I wasn't subjected to that 20% sales tax. And I also know in my last video that I did mention using bog swap to essentially set limit sell orders so that when the price hit a certain number, um, it would just go ahead and sell those tokens. However, uh, after kind of further trying to figure that out, um, it's not possible to do. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind that you can't use bog swap. You have to use the soul swap here, like their native decks, so to speak, uh, to be able to sell your hoard tokens. So as of right now, there's no way to automate the buy and sell of, of hoard tokens um, based on or like the the ability to set limit orders, I guess, uh, on the hoard token. But one thing I also do want to point out, if we look at the... Um, the BUSD that's in the liquidity manager, uh, let's see, we can see $1.6 million, uh, almost 1.7. Uh, but I think this is important too. So like since October 5th of this month, very rarely has it had a net positive day, right? You can see the inflow here, uh, $312,000 outflow, $360,000. So a net negative of $48,000. But really they haven't seen a positive day, maybe one here, uh, where the liquidity manager is bringing in more money than it's pushing out to keep the price stable. So it's almost like they're, they're on a race against the clock to hopefully get to a point where People that first got into the protocol are are um, having these decay dates hit and their plots decaying, right? Um, that's obviously going to stop a lot of the rewards paying out. And if people want to, they're going to have to buy back in um, or be able to uh, to compound the rewards. So that's what it almost seems like. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I'm just kind of keeping track of this. Um, 
And obviously, if it gets to a point where they're not able to sustain the price, then I'll be just looking to make an exit plan uh, as soon as possible. Here, I haven't, I have not yet claimed any of these tokens, so they're still, my, all my plots are still earning that one percent per day. So I'm still just kind of in limbo, checking on the LMS, checking on how the protocol is doing. I know they have an AMA coming up, um, I believe, on Thursday. Uh, so I'll be definitely listening to that and reporting back to you guys uh, with any information that I find out uh, as it pertains to the Horde protocol. Other than that, guys, I think that's going to cover. I know I wanted to make this video a little bit shorter than typical, but there's a lot of shit going on, right? We, eh, there's a lot of stuff. And not even to mention, I didn't even mention this, but S Rocket. <laughs> you want to hear something super annoying and something that I kind of kicked myself in the ass for yesterday is that yesterday morning when I woke up, I came in here. I withdraw my rewards like I do every every single morning at like four o'clock in the morning. I come in here, withdraw my rewards, and then I check out my charts. Check out all the like how things are doing that or how things are performing that I'm actively invested in. I do it every morning. So I withdraw my rewards. I saw that S Rocket was on a slight dip, like more than I've seen in a very long time. And it was around like the $70 mark. Um so I was like, shit, well, I should probably just DCA and buy some more S-Rocket tokens. So bought some more S-Rocket tokens. And then immediately after that, I checked Stable Funds uh, Discord and that update was there. So uh, obviously, if there's no need to have S-Rocket tokens, if they're not being paid out to holders of the S-Rocket tokens, um, if, if those holders are not no longer getting the Matic dividends, then there's no reason to hold the token. So it dropped, um, seen a little bit of a bounce and a, and a little bit of pullback. It's sitting at $37 right now, but we don't know the implications that S rocket tokens are going to have in the future with, um, with stable funds. So as of right now, I'm just holding on to them. You know, there's not a lot of liquidity here to be able to sell. So uh, it's just one of those things that it is what it is. Um, hindsight's 2020, right? Um, that being said, guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. Sorry, another long video, but we had a lot of information to discuss. Hope you guys found value in today's video. If you did, like I said, please smash that like button and we'll catch you on the next one.